Hello, very good evening and welcome to Spray TV Primetime News. I'm Akash Vasanth Pivituru. Let's look at the headline first. Modi ready to meet President at Kathmandu Sak Summit. The result of the United Nations Commission investigation are detrimental to Sri Lanka. JHU to make decision on supporting Maitripala Sirisena. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi ahead of his Nepal visit to attend the SAC summit said the development of closer relations with the neighbours. It was a key priority for his government as he looks forward to hold talks with President Mahindra Rajapaksha on the margin of the summit. President Mahindra Rajapaksha left for Nepal last morning to attend the 18th SAC summit. The president will attend the opening session of the summit today and retreat on Thursday. In addition to the SAC related events, President Rajapaksha will also visit Lumbini, the birthplace of the Lord Buddha. While there, the president is scheduled to inaugurate the Dutu Gamanu Pilgrim's Trust, an administrative building at the Buddhist University, and the newly constructed bridge. According to the reports, the United Nations Human Rights Council finding on human rights violation would result in detrimental to Sri Lanka. The United Nations Human Rights Council has been conducting investigation on war crimes and human rights violations on Sri Lanka. According to the reports, and as per the result of the United Nations Human Rights Council investigation, the ruling party government of Sri Lanka will be convicted in its criminal activities. The spokesman of the World Tamil Forum, Suren Surendran, is an interview given to an international media. He has mentioned about this also. A election monitoring body and Catholic leaders in Sri Lanka have condemned the use of Pope Francis' image on campaign fostering futuring President Mahindra Rajapaksha and called for their removal from public spaces. The president has already used the Pope's images for his election campaign and there are posters in public place in Colombo said Rohan Hetiarachi, executive director of the People's Action for Free and Fair Elections. The posters, which feature the Pope and Rajapaksha, have been placed in multiple locations around Colombo since last week, though it is not known who is responsible for distributing them. As an election monitoring body, we urge the respective authorities to remove immediately these illegal posters and cut out, said Hetiarachi. Minister of Foreign Employment Dilan Perra says none of the ruling party members believe the government. Group of people says 10 to 15 ruling party parliamentarians, including ministers, deputy ministers, and parliamentaries, are scheduled to quit from the party. However, totally six ruling party members have left us and joined the opposition. They say that they will catch the provincial council ruling. These individuals can conduct only fake campaigns. Minister made this statement during media briefing held at the Sri Lanka Freedom Party headquarters yesterday. A number of lakes have reached spill level due to incessant showers during the last few days. According to the Med Department, Rajangane, Angamur, Tisa Lake, Mahavilachya and Thuruvila are among the lakes that have reached spill level. Onion farmers of Dambul stage a protest against selling imported red onions at a Dambul Economic Center. Farmers engage in the protest blocking the A9 road near Dambul. The Rajagiriya Heva Vitarana Mahavidya principal who had gone missing for a few days returned to his home. A businessman was wounded in a shooting to place in Balumahara. It is revealed that a gang that had entered a house in Balumahara last night. Former President Chandrika Bandarnayaka Kumaratunga says that, that she will take out the files of Rajapaksha family members. Chandrika Bandarnayaka and Maitri Palsirisena visited to late Bandarnayaka's memorial yesterday. Speaking to media, former president went on to say, Recently, President Maitri Rajapaksha stated, I own the files of members who have left the party in a public meeting. Responding to this statement, former president went on to say, When our team captures the power, we will reopen the files of Rajapaksha family. Please don't repeat the question once again, she said. Three members of the Eastern Provincial Council representing the All Island Muslim Congress decided to work independently in the Provincial Council. 
All Island, Sri Lanka People Congress Assistant Provincial Council members and the former minister MSS Amir Ali and two other members MS Swear Chipli Farooq decided to step down from the government and work independently, Party General Secretary YLS Hamid said. Minister Richard Baduddin organized special media briefing at Colombo today. Speaking at the media briefing, Minister went on to say, Party Working Committee hold brief discussion last evening on support in the presidential election. Common opposition candidate Maitripala Sirisena visited the SWRD Bandarnaikas Memorial at Horagola yesterday. Maitripala Sirisena scheduled to contest in the presidential election currently obtained blessings from at the event Maitripala Sirisena was accompanied by the former president Chandrika Bandarnaika Kumaratunga. At the event, Maitripala Sirisena called upon the state employees to make clear decision on December 23rd and 24th to abolish executive presidency from this island. Postal voting for the upcoming presidential election will take place in 23rd and 24th of December. Addressing the Parliament, Minister Douglas Devananda says, President Mahindra Rajapaksha could solve problems of Tamil nations. Tamil people should cast their supports for the victory of President's third term. Tamil National Alliance called upon the treasurer to brief on failing to allocate funds to Northern Provincial Council. The Tamil National Alliance always willing inform that all people are staving in the Northern Provincial Council. This budget proposal proposed until year 2020. In the 2015, government allocates more funds to the Northern Province, but only 31% spend for the development activities. The Tamil National Alliance members visit foreign countries says that they have contracted roads in the Northern Province, but the government has contracted roads in the Northern Province. The Jatika Hello Rumaya, which is already an unofficial member of the common opposition, will officially announce on November 27th. Jatika Hello Rumaya General Secretary Patuli Champika Ranavaka said that the JHU will announce their decision at a press conference in Colombo. We will always work towards ensuring democracy and JHU has already taken steps to educate the people about our policies, Ranavaka said. Earlier this month, partly Champika Ranavaka and Uday Gamampila stepped down from their ministerial position of the government and declared their supports to the common candidate. Crowds have gathered across the U.S. to protest against Monday's decision not to charge a police officer over the killing of back teen Michael Brown. Ferguson shooting. Protests spread across as crowds have gathered across the U.S. to protest against Monday's decision not to charge a police officer over the killing of black teen Michael Brown. Demonstrations from New York to Seattle were mostly peaceful, with protesters chanting and waving placards. In and around the St. Louis suburb of Ferguson, scene of major riots on Monday, 2,200 National Guard troops were deployed to stop further unrest. Meanwhile, the officer who shot Mr. Brown said he had a clean conscience. Darren Wilson shot Mr. Brown, 18, on 9 August in Ferguson, Missouri, sparking weeks of unrest. The grand jury's decision, announced late on Monday, means the police officer will not face state criminal charges over the shooting. Lawyers for Mr. Brown's family have denounced the grand jury's decision as unfair. No excuse with the number of troops more than trebled, the situation in Ferguson was calm on Tuesday, though tension outside the central police station began to rise as the evening wore on, the BBC's Michelle Fleury reported. Voters have cast ballots in the first round of falls in Jammu and Kashmir where Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi's Bharatiya Janata Party is trying to win power for the first time.
More than a million people are eligible to vote in the first of five phases in staggered elections for the Muslim-majority state's 87 assembly seats. The disputed Kashmir region is claimed by both India and Pakistan. It has been a flashpoint for more than 60 years and the rivals have fought two wars over the region. Thousands of soldiers were deployed in and around polling stations, as voting was held on Tuesday in 15 seats, amid fears of street protests and militant attacks. Results are due on 23 December. Voting was also held in the central state of Jharkhand, where the BJP is also attempting to gain power. For Francis has warned that the world sees European has a somewhat elderly and haggard during a speech at the European Parliament in Strasbourg. The Vatican flag flown from the European Parliament. The last visit by a Pope to the institution was by Jean Paul II in 1988, just before the fall of the Berlin Wall. Pope Francis faced a more Eurosceptic continent than his predecessor, rife with divisions and economic woes, a Europe he described as aging and weary. The time has come to work together in building a Europe which revolves not around the economy, but around the sacredness of the human person, around inalienable values. He also called for solidarity with migrants. Over 3,000 people are thought to have died this year trying to flee conflict in Syria, Iraq. We cannot allow the Mediterranean to become a vast graveyard. The absence of mutual support within the EU runs the risk of encouraging self-interested solutions to this problem. Solutions which don't take into account the human dignity of the migrants. Pope Francis then headed off to make another speech at the European Council. Before he left, an exchange of gifts. For the pontiff, the memoirs of one of the EU's founding fathers, Jean Monnet. While Australian batsman Phil Hughes is fighting for his life in intensive care after being struck on the head by a bouncer during a Suffolk side match. In South Australia now, uh, the, the, you have to excuse the pictures because they are a bit grainy. These have been taken off the internet and this is a developing story as we speak. He was 63 not out, stood there quite stunned for a while, then face first straight into the pitch. Now, medicos came onto the ground, uh, the play was abandoned temporarily at the time. Doctors worked on him for up to 30 minutes uh, before play was abandoned completely for the day. He was knocked out cold and there were reports that CPR was attempted to. He's currently listed as critical, has been rushed to hospital. A helicopter did arrive on the ground at the SCG, but he did leave via road in an ambulance. As mentioned, he is at hospital as we speak, in a critical condition. He's playing in this match, 63 not out at the stage, trying to put his hand up to replace the injured Michael Clark in the first test against India next week at the, at the, um, at the Gabba starting on Thursday week. So, look, it's, it's, we're only getting uh, bits and pieces of information out of the Sydney cricket ground as we speak, but the pitches really do speak for themselves as well. And the cricket fraternity right around the country at the moment where there are Sheffield Shield games going on, all around uh, in the lead up to this test series with players vying for one or two spots. Uh, th this has um, sort of taken everyone a bit by shock. So no play for the rest of the day at the Sydney Cricket Ground with uh, all the thoughts from the cricket world uh, firmly on Philip Hughes uh, making a, some sort of recovery from this. But it was very clear he was knocked out, David. Uh, quite a shock too. Um, for uh, those there at the ground obviously seeing this, there were also reports that curtains were draped around Philip Hughes whilst he was being worked on by medical teams as well. That's for the news today. We will meet once again tomorrow at the same time. Have a good night.